We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. First half of our program, we're talking with Butch Spiridon with the uh, CEO. He's the CEO of the National Convention and uh, Visitors uh, Corporation. It's good to have him on. Stick around. Leland Statham will be coming on, and Butch, he's going to fill us in on the downpour of rain that we can expect on the 4th of July. You tell Leland. <laughs> I have eyes on him and I expect I know. a good for him. You know, we talk about how you no get blamed. Around, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get blamed for stuff. Leland gets blamed for bad weather. You know, it's not fair. It's beyond yeah. his control. <laughs> I'm pointing at him if it turns ugly on us. All right. Do you have any tidbit to share with me? Any funny little thing behind the scenes? Anything I should know about that that I can just file away and, and wow our audience that's not up watching us this morning on Monday when we do our special coverage? Um, well, one thing I would say is people don't really understand the show, how intricate it is. And literally, there is a guy on stage reading the score as the symphony's playing. He's radioing across the river. They're in a bunker. They have to allow for the time delay and then fire the shell wow. to explode in the air on the right note with the symphony. So it's months of rehearsal and preparation to get it timed right. Uh, and uh, nobody else in the country goes to those extremes. And then to mess with your head 200 miles of wire connecting all the shells 16 trailers of pyro and that doesn't count the ones that are on the ground or in the water oh. so it is a massive massive show huge and by the way so i'm wondering yeah again you talk this is a live symphony right Yes. I mean, live symphony. It's not, this is not taped. I mean, I wonder how many other, yeah, fireworks shows actually have, and we have a wonderful symphony here in Nashville, um, actual symphony performers. Uh, I only know of the Boston Pops performing yeah. live, but not choreographed and not hand fired. Okay. So I think that's where we go the extra mile to deliver a show that only Music City could uh, deliver. And, and a lot of time, I know we get our jobs to bring visitors in, but we are, we like to create shows that the locals want. And I'm a firm believer, if a local will want to come see it, then absolutely a visitor will. So we always try to appeal to the community, because that means if they like it, there's no question the visitors will like it. And, and, and you're right. I think this is, there are events here that I get the sense when I go down there, the vast majority of people there are, are tourists or visitors, which is fine, okay? But I, I think with the 4th of July, I don't know if you can even speak to a ratio, but uh, would you say the, the majority of the people there are from the general viewing Middle Tennessee area? But I know we probably have folks coming from around the country for the spectacular show, but would you say most are local? Uh, yeah, I'd say probably in the 60, 70 percent yeah. local. Uh, we do a lot of surveying during the day, and that's more out of towners. Uh, but without question, it's a dominant 50 mile radius. And then literally people from all over the world. Uh, this show has risen in stature, and uh, we've had comments from random visitors that they've been to every show across the country and this is the only one they come back to. Yeah, it's awesome. So uh, we're proud of what's come out and, you know, it's always good for me. I like to do it, but important. Police, fire, OEM, parks, public works. It is a team effort yeah. to produce the event and keep it safe. Yeah, so, and that, that's one of the, that. the big thing will be keeping it safe and the like. And, uh, and you mentioned earlier, we were just talking about the fireworks show, which is the uh, the cherry on top of this uh, big 4th of July Sunday. But, I mean, really, you got, you know, starting on Friday, Saturday, and there's, there's what, I, I think I counted uh, on, I was looking, um, at more than a dozen bands will be playing, right? I mean, there's going to be all kinds of live music leading up to the, the final event, right? I mean, there's stuff going on all weekend downtown. We have a, we program all day Sunday with the Family Zone mm -hmm. and live music over at Walk of Fame Park. Uh, mm -hmm. We have music all day on Monday the 4th, and then the main show starts at, uh, at 5 o'clock. And one of the other things maybe that you could help um, when you're out there live sweating with us is we have screens and sound all over downtown so there everybody doesn't have to get right in front of the stage 
uh, Walk of Fame Park will have screens. Riverfront Park will have sound. Uh, courthouse Square will have sound. So we try to make it a uh, an easy to consume event by going the extra mile. And I know you want to try to do this and make people comfortable. If I'm there on a riser in the heart of it, say at Second and Broad, when I try to go live and it's noisy behind me, I have trouble concentrating. Is there a way that there can be signs put up like, you know, shushing the audience at least for when I'm going live? <laughs> or is, is that doable or is that unrealistic request on my part? And I'm asking you because I know you could make uh, it happen. Like here we can make it happen i know right but i'm not sure that we'll have to listen to you yeah and <laughs> if you did you would get blamed for it yeah that's <laughs> this, this dumb <laughs> da is trying to tell us to shush on lower broad yeah, yeah, that would it. work wouldn't it hey real quick if you don't mind i know we got to leave uh with you here in a moment um just uh just to shift gears a bit a lot of talk lately with regard to um, the Republican National Convention maybe coming in 2024. Just from your perspective, again, I know you've commented on it before. Uh, I know that it's down pretty much, it sounds like, to Milwaukee and Nashville. The mayor's office is involved with putting some type of proposal. The, the state, of course. What, what are your thoughts about uh, that moving forward? What it would mean to the city, if it's a good idea, bad idea? Uh, well, it's obviously a big event. Uh, it would be nice if it was less controversial. You know, I never thought I'd say I long for the days of normal uh, Republican and Democrat uh, spats. Uh, so it's it's taken a life of its own. You know, we did what we were asked, which was prepare uh, or respond to an RFP. And uh, it's kind of reached above my pay grade right now. And... Uh, you know, I'd like to see public discourse happen in the, the way we've all grown up watching it. And it's kind of sad to see what has happened to our political system right now. So I have, I've chosen to step back and say it's not my place okay. to decide who can can come visit. You know, our job, we're a welcome, open and inviting city. And we're going to stick to that and let the politicians argue this one yeah and listen that and fourth of july and other big events wanted as we wrap things up just to reemphasize, uh, security is a, a bigger issue than ever before be it if you have something whether it's a democrat or republican convention you know that there's going to be issues there with security the fourth of july with three hundred and fifty thousand people um coming downtown now you've certainly dealt with crowds that much but in this environment these days especially something patriotic fourth of july the way things are so heated in this country um, how confident are you about the security? And is it safe to say there's a lot of things going on that either the public won't see or that you certainly aren't going to share, but they're in place? Absolutely. Uh, every year we enhance and improve our, our safety plan. You just watch around the country and every time there's an incident, you, you address it. So I feel like everything that can be addressed from the safety of the stage structurally to uh, metal detectors for the crowd to, to walk through. We are saying no weapons allowed. Uh, we serve alcohol and we screen everybody. We'll be doing random bag checks. There'll be undercover uh, law enforcement. We have several hundred uh, plainclothes security off duty and rock solid type folks. Uh, we'll do everything we can. We know we can't think of everything, but we are constantly trying to prepare. And again, working with law enforcement in the city and the state is invaluable, and we couldn't do it without them. And just as we wrap things up, you don't need a ticket to get in. As you said, there will be metal detectors, certain access, but you don't really need a ticket. But the idea, I imagine people will start grabbing lawn chair seats and setting up their blankets, you know, hours before the show happens, right? If you want to get a decent spot, you might want to get there a bit early. Yeah, we uh, normally see people show up around 8 a.m. to grab either right in front of the stage or right down low at Riverfront Park. Uh, and what I would say is if you're coming, make plans to come down, I'd say no later than 7, because after that, it gets really hard to to make it on time you'll be late or you'll miss it yeah exactly as far as getting down here you know parking and dealing with that i, I think music city star is going to have a uh, a special line coming down for the fourth right i mean that for folks who come from yeah, that they, that area they typically 
typically run on the fourth. Uh, all the major parking garages are open. Uh, Nissan Stadium is open for parking. You can walk across the KVB Bridge or watch from that area. So, you know, main thing, it's going to be hot. It's going to be crowded. Uh, so be patient. Allow time, both ingress and egress, and enjoy enjoy the day, even with all the chaos going on. This is still the best country in the world, and we have a lot to be thankful for. Yep, and that uh, arguably the best show in the country is going to be right here. I, look, I'm looking forward to it. I've got to be honest with you, Butch. It's been a while since I've been down to the uh, 4th of July celebration in Nashville. I've watched it, but not been part of it, and uh, I will be working, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. So if you get a chance, come by and bring me a Dr. Pepper. Uh, you but you got won't. It. I will find you. No, no, you won't. You won't. You You'll be busy with other stuff, maybe delaying the show for some uh, crazy reason, okay? That's all right. You will see me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Butch, but thank you for coming on. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I hope things go really well this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Appreciate you and appreciate Channel 5 covering our events. Yeah, Thanks. Glad to be part of it. Take care. Butch Beard and joining us this morning. Always appreciate his time. Um, he's, uh, he's a good man and he puts together a spectacular show. So uh, we'll talk with him again down the road. We're going to take a break when we come back. As I said, Leland Statham will join us for the final two segments of the program. If you'd like to call in uh, questions about the weather and the like, not just about the 4th of July, but comments about just this extreme heat we've seen, what it meant and how quickly it jumped on top of us and some of the the severe weather, ah, it's your chance to, you know, question Leland. So we'll take a break. Be back with him right after this. this